beautiful people hey. we are back with another episode of simply extra i don't know why i just said it so slow like that i don't know if i was trying we're getting to sultry now build up some uh build up some stamina here the what ratings are in they want more sexy dimes Could you gotta give it to them i can try to do that we should do like an asmr video stream one day just me talking really sultry <laughs> to the mic. I don't feel like I had the voice for that. But anyway, hello everyone. It is your illustrious duo here, Wavy. I just wanted to myself. Uh, this is Wavy. <laughs> we never get the no. intro right. No, I don't think we <laughs> You don't have one, one really. No, just... not really. Y'all just take us for who we are, and yeah. I appreciate that. And I'm Dimes. I mean, I think that's pretty obvious, but... We are back on this beautiful, glorious Sunday. The sun is shining. We have, I hardly have lights going on in the studio today. It's that is gorgeous. Natural light. And for Michigan, this right here, this is where all of our serotonin and our dopamine starts kicking in. Because <laughs> the winter is, I don't actually know though. The winter comes and goes here. So, who knows? Whatever. We just gonna take it as it is. And I'm gonna enjoy the sunshine. Because it always makes me feel better. Yes. Mm -hmm. I also feel like this is when Michiganders, Midwest folk, mm -hmm. start getting real ignorant because they're like, True. oh, it's springtime, getting outside. cold, going outside, running around downtown with no mm -hmm. clothes on. Mm -hmm. Come home with a sickness. Not me, though. I, I don't take my coat off until at least like 75 plus. That's just me. I have been taking my iron pills, though, so... I just feel like I'm, I'm just cold all the time, though. <laughs> Absolute pause. Mm -hmm. Where do you get your iron pills? Well, let me uh, I need it. that. I don't take iron pills. <laughs> I take um, like a multivitamin and all of okay. my stuff. But also, I eat a lot of leafy greens now. So I'm getting my iron from my, my food source, if you will. So I highly recommend a lot of kale if you are into that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, I just don't like eating kale as much, but I have mm. very low iron. But that's what everyone says online, or at least like you know the first page results. Yeah, pears, kale, you kale. Like pears? Oh, like, I do like pears. Pears have iron. Okay. I've been through this. I don't like taking iron pills. I don't know why. I've never been a fan of them. I will avoid them until I die. Um, hmm. but my doctor gave me like a list of stuff when I was younger of like ways I can get iron in my foods as opposed to taking the pills. So basically anything green. Pears. I don't know about green apple, but I know you can get them from pears. And okay. spinach, obviously. Okay, spinach, yes. Love spinach. Okay. Mix, mix and kill with your spinach. Have like a nice power greens okay. mixture. Arugula, all that good jazz. I'm really for it. I just made a pot of kale the other day, and I'm really big on seasonings. So I just throw like lemon pepper and... Put a little apple cider vinegar on it. Keep it going. Make it a little spicy. Ooh, I love all those flavors. Mm -hmm. I love a little, a little sour, sweet. Mm, a little yeah. citrusy, you know, enhancement, if you will, to the greens to okay. kind of warm it out. But I can also just eat like a bag of spinach just for the sake of eating it. I love spinach. My friend used to call me Papa because <laughs> I just love spinach. <laughs> but yeah. There you go. Well, tip health of the tip. Week. Thank health you. Tip of the week. you. You're welcome. They always slip in there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> also, another little fun fact: make sure you actually cook your greens because that's when you're gonna get the uh, the nutrients. Because if you just eat like the spinach leaves uncooked, you're not getting anything. You, oh. In order to release the nutrients, the spinach has to be harmed, if you will. So you have to like cook it or like I don't know so much about like blending it, mm. but cook your your food that's how you get the most nutrients dimes health tip of the week thank you no, no problem so rose and thorns would you like to start or would you like me to start take it away i feel like i start i'm not ready today no worries <laughs> i i'm for i'm here for you um i actually have two roses this week okay. i got a new job y'all I got the job I wanted, and it's been a very long time coming, but I'm very excited for it. I am just pumped. I was so excited to put in to my supervisors and stuff. Like, y'all got me for another week. You're not getting two. Just one. <laughs> 
and I'm so happy for that. And then my second rose, I'm going to kick it back to last Sunday night when I had dinner with you and your partner and just hung out outside of recording and just did some friend things because we haven't been able to do that much. So that was nice. I feel like it started off, it kicked my week off to a great start. And yeah. So kind of you to say. And yeah, that was definitely a highlight for me as well. And the food. I loved mm -hmm. that restaurant. It was really good. I had like a burrito with french fries. And pasta. With vegetables. <laughs> and it's not like they gave me the like basic vegetables. It was pretty good. That sauce was good. I, I would definitely go back for sure. And just to broadcast, we also started watching a particular show that was number one on Netflix that mm -hmm. night. And... You're You've been obsessed ever since. <laughs> You've been on in a few minutes. You're gonna get that review from me. Yes. So, um, my thorn. Yeah. I kind of went through an emotional realization, but it was something that needed to happen, and I knew it needed to happen. So, it happened for a reason. I'm not like necessarily sad about it. It's a thorn because obviously in that moment I didn't like how I felt, but. After ha being an adult and looking back on it and analyzing everything, it needed to happen. Woke me up. Gonna change the way I move. Um, and yeah, I'm thankful for it, actually. So I'm not gonna go into detail or anything, but just know that I had to be an adult. And that's exactly what I did. Cheers to me, I guess. Handled it. Yes. Gotta do what I gotta do out here. Now what about you? Rose for this week was, I feel like I've been talking about a project for a while that's been um, dwindling in my life, but I officially got the thumbs up to this week, being like, yo, we're done, we like it, it's fine. <laughs> you love to Jesus. hear it. Like, wow. So now I can just start working on practicing animation for work. Ooh. That's actually probably my rose, is um, I watched like 15 minutes of a tutorial, it's like an hour long tutorial, and I'm like, yeah. I wasn't, uh, dissuaded by it. I'm like, this is beautiful. This is bringing mm -hmm. images to life and it's painting. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Like, duh. Like when I watch an animated movie, I'm like, oh yeah, it looks like this is someone hand brush stroke some of these things. Mm. But I've never actually watched someone build using Adobe Animate um, and like tools that I'm somewhat familiar with. So oh. that'll be kind of a new venture for me. If, um, hopefully it was all in a career change in a couple of years because they are paying animators. Yeah. Um, and I, again, I have mostly experience in Photoshop, Illustrator, like all these other things, mm -hmm. but I think it'd be really cool to like turn some of the short films and stories in my mind, to, like actually just build them myself versus yeah. having to hire a film crew. We love to see that. Also LinkedIn has really good videos about that. Like I found that out a couple years ago. I had a friend who actually got into like animation and oh, stuff. Oh yeah? Uh, LinkedIn. I don't know if you have to have like a business account with them though. Probably. Maybe, who knows, but hmm. they have a lot of like tutorials and stuff on there. Very interesting. And oh, like skill building tutorials. Yeah, like very oh, in depth. So if you can, I, I suggest checking that out. I used to watch them sometimes at my old job in college and get paid to do it. So whatever, you know. LinkedIn, I mean, just to like gag or like um, gush a little bit. <laughs> gag gush, I don't know. You're our gag. Um... <laughs> They seem to have like a really great product development team. Like oh. they're always developing that app and giving things like, oh yeah, I think I actually would want that. Right. Geniuses. Very much so um, professional development, if you will. And then, okay, those were two roses. I, <laughs> I have my thorn for this week is I'm all over the place, bro, obviously. Like I'm just a little like, a little bit this week. I think um, you named it as anxiety. That's probably it. It's also just like, yeah, feeling a little fidgety. Mm. So, trying to get myself centered. I look forward to taking a bath today. I cleaned this house top to bottom. Okay, I actually did uh, kind of give up on the second floor. But that <laughs> first floor, though. That's what matters. Yeah, shiny. That's what matters. Um, and so that means I get to treat myself to a enjoying a clean bathroom. Yes. <laughs> you would think that would be something I care about all the time, but honey, <laughs> sometimes I just kind of zone out and it's... Hey, as mm. long as you get it done in your time, this is your home. You do what you need to do. If you pay We're the rent, smiling. you pay the bills, can't nobody tell you how to run things. Also, baths are so great. Like, I, I try to do it monthly. I haven't had my monthly bath yet, but... 
I feel like she's coming it's coming. Up soon. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Love it. Some Epsom salt, Oops. a little essential oils to soak. Have some wine. Enjoy that bath, girl. It's fantastic. Yeah, it's gonna we be a decadent that. one, I think. Some mm-hmm. apple cider vinegar. Ooh. That's classic for me. That's just a good old fashioned <laughs> cleanse. Yeah, you know, gotta get those toxins out, if you mm-hmm. will. I haven't used apple cider vinegar in my baths, but I might just add a little cat pool. It's helpful for my skin. Mm-hmm. I have like um, eczema on my arms really bad too. I'm just like, get scratchy. Mm-hmm. It's like apple cider vinegar, oatmeal. That's my wheelhouse. Oh, well, good to know. Nicole. Now I have a little tip. Yeah, I was going to say, wave me health tip for the week. <laughs> oh. I used to give my dog oatmeal baths. Oh, I miss So him. sweet of you. Yeah, he had dry skin. I had to do with what was best for him. <laughs> All right. So I think we should get on to... Our reviews. We're going to do something different this week because I never have a review because I don't watch TV like that. However, your girl watched some TV this week. Hey. I did. And we're going to talk about that show, uh, Jenny and Georgia, but I want to get into Wavy's review. Are you sure? Yeah, why not? Because the people may... Okay. It's up to you. I Let mean, me I get a little visual off, you know? up here in case you guys aren't familiar with. Okay, yeah. I'm sorry, so, I'm bouncing all over the place. No, you're fine. You are fine. <laughs> <laughs> I told y'all. Okay, cut. Let's go. So I use a streaming service called Tubi. T-U-B-I. It is free. It comes with our Roku TV, so I'm not sure if it's exclusive to Roku, but you can go online and subscribe. It's free, and they have such a beautiful collection of... Not just black entertainment, but um, just like more fringy stuff. I feel like Rob Zombie docs or films are always on there. Um, even like old country documentaries, just a really wide range. And so yeah, I watched Baps. Long story short, first came out in 1997, starring. You've seen it before? Okay, there we go. <laughs> I had never seen it before. I don't know why I did not have a lot of exposure to black cinema growing up. I just did not. So I love Tubi because it gets me back in touch with like Ooh, a culture. Ooh, rooted, if you will. Yes. <laughs> so if you're not familiar with BAPS, it is raging PG-13. It's a campy little um, cultural snippet mm-hmm. showcasing on these two women's relationship. Nisi and Mickey. Nisi is played by Halle Berry. And Mickey is played by Natalie Dizelle. Um... They're just, you know, working that nine to five kitchen shift. And eventually they're like, okay, I'm tired of this. Their men aren't like rising to the level that they want. They're like, yo, like, when are we going to level up? It's so cool how Nisi is like almost spoken to throughout the film about this. Like she has visions almost Mm -hmm. of going to audition to be in this music video for Prince. And um, they're, you know, it's adorable actually (laughs) watching them get into that part but um long story short the routine doesn't go well but they are noticed by a dude who works for a millionaire mr blackmore and they're offered to impersonate mr blackmore's granddaughter specifically Halle Berry is to impersonate her grand his granddaughter um for 10k and things get interesting (laughs) really (laughs) Um, but the most important thing is that Ruth Carter did the costume design for this project. Mm-hmm. And the hair and makeup is iconic. Um, it's yeah. Everything is in fashion now. Like, at one point, um, mm-hmm. Mickey is wearing this shirt with, like, the crazy big sleeves. And she's cooking fried chicken. And I'm just like, uh-uh. I don't see those big sleeves often on black women today. When I see on Instagram trends, it's always, like, the... Um, it's like the reworked, remodeled, ethical white girl brands. Yeah. Um, so just seeing her in that same silhouette making fried chicken, I kind of lost my mind for a second. Um, oh, yeah, this was so cute, her hairstyle. There was just Definitely. so many great things. And Ruth Carter, um, she she did really put her on was working with Spike Lee back in the day. But she's also did Amistad costume design. She did Black Panther. Mm. Um, so she really just was dressing black icons in the 90s. Yeah. And to, to the present, obviously. Um, and BAPS stands for Black American Princesses. Yes. So this is also 
it's kind of like a Cinderella story. Yeah. Um, but it takes place in the hood, even though it all t- mostly takes place in Beverly Hills. That's where our characters come from. And it's this pull between these two worlds that they mm-hmm. kind of find themselves in. It's so beautiful. It's goofy at first. At, I was really like, ooh, I don't know if I like Halle Berry in this role. Really? At first. Because in the first couple lines of dialogue, she's so stiff. And I'm like, whoa. <laughs> like, the, no one talks like, like obviously you're putting on an accent. I'm like, this is rough. But by the time they got to the airport and they run into LL Cool J and they have to like be really excited, I was like, okay, I'm sold. Yeah, she <laughs> she sold it. Um, so that's a definitely it. Yeah. What I liked about it too, I watched it when I was really young, and obviously I didn't appreciate. Oh, all she of died. The, yeah, R.I.P. Uh, I didn't really appreciate the costume designing and like the hair and stuff. But honestly, I think it it speaks a lot to like our culture. And I love the fact that they had the long nails and the the big earrings and the big hair because Lord knows that's what the hair actually looked like in the 90s and stuff. My mom used to, my mom was a, cons- a cosmetologist, so she had like the hair magazines and stuff. So yeah. I grew up seeing like these hairstyles and magazines and like just showing blackness for what it is, you know, and it's beautiful. I think it was well done. It's a great movie. I, I feel like if you had never seen it, it's definitely something that should be on your watch list. Yeah, especially if you love camp, because that's mm-hmm. another thing too. Like we see black exploitation films where it's like yeah. characterizing black folk, but seeing it in the camp setting was, yeah. I think, even more dignified and fun. And you get to see them kind of go through their like whole clueless transformation too. Like they have right. their plan and stuff on too. So it's really on brand in exactly. time. I'm, I didn't know this happened. I'm glad it happened. Well, I'm glad you got to see it and Thank uh, you. participate in the BAPS. You know, that was, like, the inspiration for um, the WAP video. Their, like, hair and stuff. Yeah. Oh. Man. I remember WAP costume. being cool because it cut through so many scenes. There was, mm-hmm. like, 18 different, like, sets in that. Yeah. Well, I, I'd say, like, I guess, like, promotional with their hair and the big, you know, buns and stuff oh, like that. okay. I Not missed that. Not so much that. the, like, sexiness portion of it, but definitely, like, the... I don't know, what do you call that? Like the advertisement for the single and stuff. And oh, yeah. didn't Very see it. So. Yeah, that was the first thing I thought of too. I was like, oh, okay, we're giving BAPS here. Love to see it. Excellent. Yeah, we love that. And I think it's very, I mean. Appropriate it, for Megan Thee Stallion. Yeah. Cardi too, because I feel like she gives. She's very a character. Much like that New York kind of uh, 90s thing. Got some mint in your mouth. ASMR, ASMR. <laughs> Sip it more. I feel like that's going to be a whole episode of some ASMR stuff, but I'm probably not going to be able to sit down and watch it. I can't it. do that. I can't This involves that. eating. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's so cool. So that, yeah, continues to have its reach today mm-hmm. in many ways. Very resonant. And then Ruthie Carter, basically anything that she's worked on was probably an awesome film. So yeah. good I didn't know start. she did Black Panther. Mm, okay. She's a genius. Clearly. Um, there's a documentary series on, I'm not sure if it's Netflix or Hulu, called Abstract, and she's featured, and she kind of talks you through her process of when she creates oh. a character, and she talks about Black Panther. I would love to see Frank. that. She did Malcolm X? Her and Spike Lee are... What? Wow. Listen, I'm learning things today. And she's an Aries. Go ahead, Aries. Queens. We love to what see it. What else do you need? It's rude. Okay. So what are we going to talk about next here? We've got an um, interesting program that was sweeping the nation. Oh, it's sweeping it off its feet. Totally opposite of BAPS. Um, so there is a hmm. show currently trending on Netflix called Jenny in Georgia. So this was what me and Wavy started last Sunday because we were very interested. And the reason why I wanted to watch it is because there was a particular scene floating around on Twitter. And y'all know how black Twitter is. Like once we get a hold of something... <laughs> it's gonna be talked about. It's gonna be circulated. Mm-hmm. So honestly, I feel like I wouldn't even watch the show if it wasn't for that particular scene being talked about and dissected by the black community. So shout out to Black Twitter once again. Once again. But the particular scene was like about the oppression Olympics and stuff. As you can see, it's literally the second uh, article at the bottom. So you watch the scene and it made me feel very oh. uncomfortable. And I'm like, okay, what the hell? So I was curious. So I introduced the idea to Wavy, so we watched the first episode. 
However, I was not expecting to get um, invested in the show. <laughs> I finished all 10 episodes by Thursday. <laughs> Dang, you yes. went in. That's because for it's you, it's, drama, yeah. you know. And for me, like I don't watch TV. Like I get home at nighttime and I just turn on like one episode of old WWE. But like while I'm drinking and eating, well, drinking my protein drink. I don't want to say drinking like I'm an alcoholic or anything. Oh. Um, <laughs> but like you know, just getting unwinding from the day. So I watch these and I have a lot of thoughts okay. and feelings about this show. So. As you can see, the two main characters, it's a white mother. She was young. She had a kid at 15. The kid is Jenny. The mom is Georgia. Oh, no, I'm sorry. You are fine. The mom is Georgia. And it basically just explores the relationship of this young mother and her teen angsty daughter as they move to this small little town in, you know, Massachusetts and explores all of that. So it kind of... It's a lot going on. I, the the daughter is obviously mixed race. Like she had her kid when she was like fifteen or whatever. And the mom's story is very particular. Like she has she had a hard childhood. So basically, her life has just been nothing but on the run and being able to adapt to different situations yeah. and making hard choices, but always putting her kids first. Like all the choices she's made were for the safety and protection of her children. And it also seems like Jenny's a kid, yeah. Yeah. Jenny is, seems to, like, never really known poverty as much mm -hmm. as Georgia has. Like, Jenny, for the most part, has the come up. has yeah. been her experience. And, and that's, that's basically the entire guys. Like, her mother was like, yeah, I had a shitty childhood, but I'm going to do whatever it takes. And I mean, whatever it takes for my children to not experience what I experienced growing up. And it kind of just circles on that i i am a i'm a stan of the mom yeah georgia, what do you like about georgia she is a fierce she's smart as shit like she's very hip to everything that's going on within their community and it's one of those like suburban like oh we just need like even in the first episode when we're like oh the moms the pta moms we need to be here and you can tell that's like not who she is but she right. knows how to place like her characters well to get what she wants and to advance yeah. her and her children. And I love that. Like, Miss Mama did not skip a beat in the episode. And she puts up with so much shit from her daughter that I'm like, <laughs> girl, you better than me. Like, she hit her one time because she got disrespectful. And she was immediately like, oh, my God. I'm like, no, bitch, she deserved that. But you should have <laughs> did a little bit more if you asked me. However, it does explore how... You know, Jenny as a teenager, how she's feeling. It explores, you know, the biracial struggle, if you will, of being a black girl in a pretty much all white community, having yeah. all white friends. Um, you did a really good job of addressing yes. that, if you ask me. <laughs> I personally I want to see season two. I do. I want this to have a season two, and I want them to explore a lot um, more. The Impression Olympic scene, I want to specifically talk yeah, about that. Yeah, you want to talk that. about that? Yes, so... Can I pull this article up? Yeah, you sure can. So basically, it started off because Georgia... I mean, not Georgia. Jenny wrote a... She straightened her hair? Yeah, she straightened that hair in her episode because she just wanted to try something new. And I'm mad they didn't really go into much detail about that. But season two. Oh, well, hopefully. I hope so. But she literally just straightens her hair and her mom was like, you straighten your hair? And she goes, I just wanted to do something different. It's like, okay, bitch. You could have said it in a nicer way. But anyway... Um, so basically, Jenny has this teacher who has, like, pretty much been putting microaggressions towards her since she started, um, and she just feels like she can't talk about that with anybody because she doesn't want to come across as angry, you know, being a black woman, and she doesn't know if anybody else even sees it. Mm -hmm. So it's like, she doesn't want to come off as she's bitching and complaining about something. So she thought that she could talk about it with Hunter, which is her boyfriend pictured, who's also biracial. He's half Taiwanese. Okay. And they, they're having this conversation because she wrote, uh, I guess they were supposed to do an essay or whatever, and they were having some sort of contest. And her father, early in the episode, took her to a spoken word kind of um, situation. Okay. So she kind of based her essay off of, like, spoken word. She words. got a little woke. Yeah, she basically talks about, like, her experience of, like, people checking boxes for her, mm -hmm. and she never got to check them herself. That kind of shit, you know, gets deep into the whole racial 
you know, complexity of all of that. Oh, I'm not even good to that yet. So, she speaks about this to her boyfriend. Because she's like, you know, am I tripping? Like, because the teacher was yeah. like, Hunter won. Even though the class was like, oh my gosh, yes girl, Jenny. Uh, you know, she's feeling good about herself. But the teacher still goes, yeah, it's going to Hunter. You didn't follow the assignment rules. You um, you wrote a poem. He did an essay or whatever. And she goes, you know. And she's her finally, yeah, teacher is a white supremacist. We yes, covered that like, in the first racist. episode. <laughs> And so now she's finally feeling like, you know what, fuck this. I'm going to voice my opinion. He's clearly racist. Like, I should have won that. Mm. So she's talking about that with Hunter. And Hunter's like, well, you did a great job, but you didn't follow the rules of the assignment. And she goes, basically, you're saying that I deserve to lose because... And basically, she's like, are you ignoring the fact that I'm saying that he's racist because I didn't, quote unquote, follow the rules of the assignment? Mm. Like, are you trying to dust that under, you know... Sweep that under the rug. So basically, they get into this, like, kind of tiff about it. And he, she's like, you just wouldn't understand. You know what I mean? Like, I'm black. I see these things. You would not understand. Which she had every right to say because he wouldn't understand. And he's like, what do you mean I wouldn't understand? Like, I'm mixed race, too. And she's like, yeah, but you're more white. You relate more to whiteness. You have the privilege, if you will, mm. to not even mention your... Um, Asian side and they actually touch on that in earlier episodes of the, the show as well because they were at parties or whatever and he, I guess they was like like their white friend he was like yeah sometimes I don't even think they know I'm half Taiwanese or anything like that okay so, so it's like, a, you yeah, building kind of towards this Easter egg. so I'm glad this conversation and I'm glad they showed Sorry. that I mean granted the, the scene was very cringy like because it's not like the words he was using yeah. he was like I don't see yeah. The way she, st- well, the way she gets up so off the bed, she's like, your favorite food is cheeseburgers and you, I speak more Mandarin than you. And he goes, well, I've never seen you pound back jerk chicken. And last time I checked, Brody twerks better than you. And it was like, okay. Right. Oh, why did y'all use those descriptors? And like, even just the, their tone of their voices just seems so eh, like, growth i that was hard to watch it was cringy i understood where they were coming from and he goes you know oppression olympics let's go and it was like oh, okay you know Ew. but i think that was taken out of context if you didn't see the show yeah it was being used against them a little yeah, bit yeah because i when i seen it, i was like what the fuck is this shit Absolutely. like what and which and that right there honestly drove me to watch the show hmm. and i after watching the episodes and seeing that build up, I get why it was put in there. And I, I appreciate them putting the scene. However, I feel like it could have been written a little better and the actors could have portrayed it a little better. Um, they could have put a little less cringe in it, but I think it's worth it. I feel like people shouldn't not give the show a chance because of that scene. Um, context definitely matters when it comes to it. But, yeah, um... So, who do you feel is the audience of the show? Because I feel like I have... I watched up to episode four. Mm-hmm. I think the audience is mm, about 20 to 25. I feel like people who can relate to the mom struggle and understand what the mom is going through as a teen mom and all the shit that she's doing to just get by as a millennial and, like, not being relating... Like, to how she can relate to her daughter, but she still can't relate to her daughter because she doesn't really know much about, like, what it is to be a teenager and a Gen Z, if you to will. To be a single mom. Yeah. And real. also, you can relate to the struggles of these teenagers because they're in their, like, sophomore year and... Especially, I feel like if you were a black person raised in a suburban community, I feel like you can relate a lot to this show. Because she's, like, having a conversation with his parents also. And they're like, has your mom started the, like, college list or whatever to get ahead? And she goes, I don't even know what y'all are talking about. (laughs) Granted, I don't like, I don't like Jenny. Like, this girl, I I swear I never wanted to choke a child in my life. Like, she doesn't understand that what her mother's doing. Like, her life is way better than if Georgia followed the path of how her childhood went, right. she could have been in a very shitty situation. And she does not see that. And it's so frustrating being the viewer. You're like, bitch, do you understand the shit your mom <laughs> went through? You are privileged. You are living in fucking Massachusetts in this beautiful home with these rich-ass white kids around you. Like, shut up and put 
things into perspective. And you think she does at one point when she finds out, like, spoiler alert if you're going to watch the show. She finds out that the mom is responsible for her ex-husband's death, which they show in the first episode. Um, oh, is this a kind of a spoiler? That's why I said spoiler alert. Oh. Like, if, if you're going to watch it, there's a reason why she did it, though, you know? Yeah. But even her finding that out, Jenny still kind of is like, my mom's so dangerous. I can't have me and my brother around this situation. And like they freak out about guns and shit and having her in the house. You know, it's someone who's like raised in, like, I, and that's weird to me, especially like the context and like the climate of America. We love guns. Like everybody has guns. That's like a right. Like in the show, they make it seem like it's just so taboo and just so dangerous that the mom has a gun in her house. And she's like, I'm a single mother. Why wouldn't I have protection? Yeah. It's just crazy to see the parallel. So I definitely recommend the show. Um, I do hope that they get renewed for season two, but I really would like them to explore um, her blackness more. I hope that yeah. she actually gets to explore that. I definitely, they show her like having the struggles of the back and forth, but I, I really want them to explore that and for her to hang out with the, the black characters. Because they only featured a few and they showed her like maybe once she had like two significant scenes, but and I they really, were awkward. I thought yeah. it was very clear she was not used to interacting with black kids. Yeah, <laughs> so I want them to explore that. I don't really like how they made her seem like she was the outsider of the black kid group, but like she just fit in so well with the white kids. But she was still considered the outsider. Like I just want them to mm. explore that with her um, a little bit more in season two. But it's yeah. definitely worth the watch, I feel. If you like drama, if you like Gilmore Girls or whatever growing up, I feel like this is a good show to kind of like see how it is to be someone who's biracial and understands that, you know? But I also feel feel like they need to make more black shows exploring this kind of... I would love to have it centered around or an episode of showing the, the black girl who doesn't get the benefit of hanging and switch coat switching or whatever if you will i would love to see it from her perspective or have a show based off of that that would be nice yeah i think that might be hopefully it could be season two mm -hmm. but like they're introducing her one that one character keeps kind of inserting herself and being like hey yeah we're over here black people are over here we're still here and jenny's like Hi. See you, girl. I'm pretty sure i have to go shopping today mm -hmm. i can relate a lot to jenny though and i think uh this ultimately this show for me was just like trying to give some in the year of 2020 where we learned the word Karen or like where really white people learned the term Karen, Georgia is kind of like a redemption character for um, a young white woman, millennial white woman. They've been kind of getting maybe um, shat upon in 2020. So I feel like the culture context of now, Ooh. maybe that's why people are really excited about that, this show. Mm -hmm. um, like a new, yeah, a new era, a new woman, new mom, new millennial. Um, I also though can relate so hard to Jenny and just like her detest from her mom too, because it's very much like a legally blonde character where it's like, yes, yeah, she uses her body and like her femininity to like get what she wants. But mm -hmm. as a teenage daughter who like doesn't have boobs yet, or like is still like uncomfortable with her body was sexually assaulted. Like we saw some really weird shit suggested with her, uh, old stepdad, um, hating her mom for that. Cause it's always a comment and I loved how they would show that like she her mom would show up and the boys are like oh my god your mom's a god mm -hmm. and she'd be like mom go in the corner yeah like get out of here stop talking to people I like that because that's a real situation that people um regardless of your mom's a single mom or not that is real um good show yeah I like how too they um I like oh, they touch on that oh you're fine like they, they, they do touch on that as well like yeah kind of narrated by both Jenny and Georgia their perspective so Georgia's like or Jenny's like yeah my mom's like sexual being it's annoying and then Georgia's like yeah I'm a sexual being because you got to do what you got to do to survive as a woman in this you know in this world and I will play this role until I die so I like that part. I like how you get to see both of their perspectives going through the same kind of situation. Yeah, it's really, and it all comes down to privilege. Mm -hmm. Ginny has the right perspective, but she doesn't realize that like her mom didn't get those same choices. Yeah. <gasps> Polite hex in the chat. Yeah. Sorry I'm late. Yeah. It's all right. Hey, Bessie. Honestly, I think we're going to go a bit longer today than normal. Yeah. So it's cool. That's cool. Hang out. Get comfy. Mm -hmm. Put your feet up. Um. Also, we're talking about... 
what's it called? Georgia and Ginny. Did you watch it on Netflix? Drop your thoughts. You should. But moving on afterwards, going into our yeah, so news. the drama, the drama of it. Yes. So in one of the episodes, Ginny makes a comment to her mom because her mom's asking her about her choices. Like, girl, what are you doing lately? And she goes, "Why do you care? You go through more men than Taylor Swift." To the average viewer, you would think, "Who gave a fuck?" Who cares? You wouldn't have thought about that comment at all. Mm -hmm. However, to Taylor Swift fans, they were incredibly offended by that. Brought it to the attention of Miss Swift. Miss Swift said, (laughs) listen, this is so sexist that it's an old, you know, topic, blah, blah, blah. So Taylor Swift took her documentary or whatever the hell off of Netflix as a result of that. I've never in my life thought I would be talking about Taylor Swift in any of the content that I'm doing, let alone two straight weeks in a row. But it goes back to the theme of last oh, yeah. week. Yeah, well, last week was whatever. Yeah, it goes back She's to that fascist, theme. She's a fascist, so let's get into it. You're <sighs> not exempt from critique. And that's just that. Every artist on every show since the fucking dawn of time has been critiqued about what they do. If that's the kind of content you're going to put out, then what do you expect? You know what I mean? And I definitely don't feel like she would have done that or any of that would have been mentioned if if it was a critique of another artist. Nobody would have batted an eye, but since it's Miss Taylor Swift, I feel like her response was very much so... Like, like you see... There we go. I'm trying to find that shit. I'm like, I know we saw this. It's very much so... Like, her response was very... Karen like if you will very very white woman privilege like I'm since you made that joke I'm gonna pull all of my stuff off of Netflix like they could have said something way worse but what do you do if you have like five albums talking about nothing but breakups and how men ain't shit then what do you expect people to talk it's about literally your brand Literally. Okay, here's Taylor Swift's text. Hey, Ginny and Georgia 2010 called and it wants its lazy deeply sexist joke back how about we stop degrading hardworking women by defining this horseshit as funny? She spelled funny with different letters. Also, at Netflix, after Miss Americana, this outfit doesn't look cute on you. Happy Women's History Month, I guess. I think she actually hired a 16-year-old to write that. Like, what do you care? Ugh. You go through men fast. Okay, it's the comment that she said. She really needs to just chill. Or, uh, but honestly, yeah, too, Taylor Swift and why Kanye West, why I'm like not fully convinced that he was like attacking her and they work together, is Definitely. because she does, she knows a media opportunity when she sees one. Mm-hmm. Like, if she can play the, I'm sorry, but if she can play the victim, she gonna do it. it and it's going to work gets. in her favor. It's just ironic because she makes jokes about it herself. All right, right. Like, this is her thing. It's just funny, too, what we were just saying about the show is um, the mom, Georgia, is kind of like a reclamation of the millennial white woman because 2020, we saw the Karen Mm -hmm. archetype seen so many times, and Georgia was breaking a lot of barriers in that way. And so the fact that Taylor Swift, who she looks like Georgia, like this is the spitting image type of character, it's pretty interesting. (laughs) She did not see the irony in her speaking out. I think it's weird that that even became like a a whole backlash, if you will, because I think one of the main themes of the show is exploring feminism and how people have this one like like look upon feminism because they even Jenny herself like identifies as being a quote unquote feminist, but she makes comments like that to her mom and she does all of that and her mom's like, well, I don't really think that's very you know progressive of you yeah so i feel like that's one of the themes of the show and i feel like her little 13 year old 15 year old fans was like oh my god like super (laughs) offended when they heard that and not really thinking about it in the context of what the show is as a whole i just don't like taylor Swift. not a fan like just and and things like this kind of just piss me off but i remember getting in a yelling match with a grown ass man about taylor swift jesus christ he <laughs> loves that woman she was like you don't know audrey she's a good person she meets with her fans fans who have like gotten in car accidents on their way to her show like she sends them money and i'm like bro so that's okay but the fact of the matter is that she allows you to see those things and has made them into photo ops so that's a you know that's like, like most celebrities do yeah bro it was so funny we really actually had an argument I, I just, I don't like Taylor Swift. Never been a fan of her. None of that. Like she's very much an opportunist. 
an opportunist. But the funniest thing to ha- that, that came from no, this... It gets worse. ...is that if you guys know who Todrick Hall is, Todrick Hall is a gay black man. He started off doing, like, you know, musical numbers and shit on YouTube, and he got recognition from that. He started working with, like, RuPaul, and I think he worked with Taylor Swift at a point. Am I close to spelling his name? Uh, no. It's T-O-D. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, Todrick Hall. It's the first one. This is USA Today. Oh, okay. Yeah. I am got you. You, he came to the defense of Miss Swift, if you will. And Black Twitter's like, oh, hey, Todrick. You, you never miss an opportunity to hop on the uh, bandwagon to defend these white women when they need you. But where are you when black women need your help? Or where are you when you have to pay your black employees because you don't? So as you can see, Black Twitter got involved, and they had their thoughts. I love this. So we should just <laughs> these tweets are fucking hilarious because they're all true. You got the Uncle Ruckus meme as a nobody type mm-hmm. call. I start every day by thanking the white man for the sunrise. Basically, <laughs> like that's I love his brand this now. <laughs> okay, so he was supporting people being like, um, this show is a disgrace because it talks poorly about. My girl, Taylor Swift. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, and so people are like, wow, she could care less if you die tomorrow. And then you could see this tweet. He literally Sorry. says, also, she hasn't dated a crazy amount of people. The mm-hmm. jokes make no sense. And not that it matters, but I can think of quite a few pop stars who run through men and women like it's cardio. So if you had an issue with the initial script that said you run through more men than Taylor Swift... Why not jump to her defense by slut shaming other people in the industry that did the same thing? Not that it matters. Yeah. Not that it matters. That would have made a bit more sense. I don't know. This three never watched the show. It's just very awkward that they're willing to risk their platform like that. Or maybe it's not really a risk to them because no. it's all good. I love that um, Polite Hex added that their sister met T Swift when mm. she was a country singer. Deets. Deets. Okay. And yeah, it's like oh, they're also a tragic fan. He. I liked his little YouTube things, but once he did that Kim Kardashian thing like a while ago, it's like you. I don't know what. I don't know. Basically, he did the same thing. Like, came for Kim Kardashian, slut shaming her for. Only protecting her from the masses. Uh huh. But as she you can likes see, it there. Don't ruin it. She likes Black it. Black Twitter's like, hold on there, buddy. Todrick Hall is getting on Twitter every two to three business days being fake woke feminist like he hasn't been mocking Kim Kardashian's sex tape leak a few months ago. So as you can see, Mm. the hypocrisy, also I think that's really weird that he, um, like nobody was thinking about you and you just saw Taylor Swift's name and was like, opportunity! Like, you guys are birds of a feather and that's, that's hilarious to me. But Todrick's known for not, you know, paying his dancers and stuff that are mostly a crew of black people. So <laughs> black, <laughs> black Twitter has an issue with that. Like, how are you going to try to jump to the defense of these women who clearly do not need your help nor ask for it, um, but you don't support the people that actually are on your payroll? Right. I like it. Like, guys, there's bigger whores out there. Relax. Please. I love how you put that black. <laughs> But yeah, so that was hilarious. I just, I don't like anything about Taylor Swift. I don't like her brand. I just. It's funny. I, uh, it's, these things really should impact celebrities' clout and uh, them as a credible source, but it really doesn't because everybody's doing the same thing. They're just reacting to just the clips and bits. Mm-hmm. That's why I like that article from, what was that that we were looking at? Vulture, I believe. Vulture. I was comparing the debut of. Ginny and Georgia to the cuties and how mm-hmm. people just can take 30 seconds of the movie and then have their entire opinion sending death threats. Like, yeah. we are really operating on a low level, like, That's internationally. We really are. We're in trouble. Bro. That's really crazy. Oh, uh, well, Taylor, it's unfortunate you've had to be in our stream for two weeks in a row. <laughs> Girl, you're 30 years old. Oh, man, I changed the settings on our, tr- on our Twitch because I was worried about people, like, being mean. But, um, so now it's, like, really case-sensitive, so sorry about that. If you use a word like slut or whore, apparently mm. it's triggering our stream. <laughs> but, yeah, but slut-shaming, as you stated, polite hexes, 
It's weird. How do you defend slut shaming by slut shaming? It makes zero sense. Word. Moving on. Recommend the show. <laughs> Recommend the show, though. Definitely. It's worth a watch, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. I hope they get renewed for a season two. Hey, hey. So moving on to social media this week that made me feel great. Okay. There is a um, group of black men. They call themselves the Basement Gang. And they are on Instagram And all they do is make, like, little dancing videos, and, like, it's so cute. It's, like, the perfect representation of black boy joy. It's just three friends. They're based in Ontario. Lucky. And all they do is just get together, like, damn, like, cute little videos. And I don't watch any of their videos without smiling. Like, I think it's impossible to, like, watch a video and just, like, not have a smile on your face. I feel like this is what um, all boys sleepovers look like. Basically. I would hope so. (laughs) So I think it's funny, and I I thought it was something that we should share with our viewers today. Yes, let me turn the music down here, Boop. and show you a little clip of the basement game. I hope they're having a great day. They deserve it. Shout out to you, basement gangers. Mm-hmm. Anyone in particular? I am a fan. If you could see the one that's squatting with the yellow. This kinda, one. Uh, wait, where? This are you? one. Yep. I, um, I'm a fan. Are you I'm saying, down. like, which one am I a fan of? of the videos yeah, the ones we the watch. People? Oh, I was, ta- I was talking about the man, the one in the middle. I'm a fan of him. But all of them are great. <laughs> they just dance the little songs and just have a good time together, you know? I think it's really cute. It is so cute. We don't see enough of this. Mm-hmm. And it shows, I think it's a good representation of, like, Kiki people's perception of black men like they they get together and people automatically think they're doing something that's like not productive or just something that's like Ah. super toxic and it's like a parallel like showing black men smiling just having a good time and being friends and loving each other as opposed to like you know the bs that the media presents them on like these are some a cute little group of friends just having a good time yeah i mean just going your scrolling your feed how many representations of black and brown men do you see mm-hmm. is there a model that's like a freeze frame mm-hmm. or you know is it something scandalous well, i think Rappers. it's so cute together they seem to be brothers this is definitely a mm-hmm. bromance moment definitely they're so cute brought to you by champion i am very much so a fan <laughs> of the uh of nate i did a little stalking um so nate if you just so happen to be watching this He's probably married. I would hope not. <laughs> <laughs> not that it matters. I'm never going to be in Mississauga, Ontario. But Mississa- Right? Uh, I love that. I actually love that they're just like average dudes. Like, mm-hmm. they really, like, that was Literally just it. get together. Let me give a follow. That is so cute. The the one where he's wearing, like, yeah, they're dancing yeah. they're like, Missy's lose control. And I just think oh, it's so funny. Oh, shit. That is funny. Like, go wow, ahead. Wow, the screen got crazy. Uh, yeah, it got huge. <laughs> It's just so cute. <laughs> okay. Ooh, that reminds me. Great. Yeah. Love it. So yeah, if you want to some joy, go follow the Basement Gang on Instagram. It is Basement Gang underscore. But Got also follow sometimes our house if you want. Oh not. yeah. Hit that up. You should follow us too. Just you know, shameless plug. Real shameless quick. plug. Shameless real plug. Real quick. Our default is just going to be the fact that they gave 16% Rotten Tomatoes to BAPS. Whatever. We don't care about them. No. Pilot Hex asked if we watched Cuties. I did watch Cuties. Did you check it out? I did not. I did not. I wonder if it's even still on Netflix. I should might. Did it actually get removed? I don't know. It was getting close. People were really Mm -hmm. showing their last remaining brain cell. I, I I will say the promotion of it was a it. little weird to me. Like I feel like the way that they presented it, I really sh- they should have kind of started off with like, please understand this is you know commentary on society. I feel like if I feel like that's dumbing down your audience so mm-hmm. much though. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm not gonna lie, I, I saw like you know them talking about like the little girls getting together, wanting to start like that thing, and I was like, yeah, yeah. What? Yeah. But I kind of figured, but just me being the person I am and that's, I was like, this probably has to be like, you know, 
criticism on who we are as people. <laughs> it's a movie, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, you know, people aren't gonna go the limit. How did you feel about the movie, though? I thought it was really beautiful. I cried. Oh, you brought tears to your eyes. I um, who did it remind me of? It's been a while since I've watched it. I should just cut. Hey. Mm. Let's go to cuties, just so we can. Yeah. Yeah, I just thought it was really beautiful, and um, oh, I know who I'm thinking of, like the uh, Amelia or something. I don't know. It was just very French in the sense that mm. you wouldn't know sometimes when you're entering into a fantasy world or a memory or like a present space. So like, okay. very well made. Um, I just know what I was doing. As a femme girl in fourth grade listening to T-Pain's I'm in Love with a Stripper. I know what me and my friends used to do when we listened to that music. Right. And it was very similar to this. Of course, we didn't have social media involved. Yeah. And so that's why I love this movie too, because it was showing all the red flags that as a parent, I would be getting my notepad out and taking yeah. notes instead of being upset. I'm like, don't show me. Yeah. Like, you are so fucking stupid. Yeah. Ignorance really runs a lot of these people. I don't know. Mm. This is this is crazy to me. How people did, couldn't could not see that this was a warning, a smoke signal, and that's what that trailer was. It was a smoke mm -hmm. signal. It was uh, the French trailer, and just overall marketing is very different from the American version. Okay. And that's why I also get really fascinated by this too. It's like I almost feel like as an experiment, as I was reading more about the director, I almost feel like she kind of let things go. Yeah. And see, like, yeah, let's see what this white male American um, industry is going to make of this film. Hmm. So they chose, you know, I'm sure she signed off on it, but maybe not. I don't, it's crazy actually how in production p the creator never speaks or sees things until final. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, I also thought very telling of just our society today of like what we don't like to admit about ourselves. Yeah. Um, the stats are there, TikToks, uh, Instagram, the stats are there. We know what people like and what they spend time looking at. Yeah. And this movie was just presenting that to our faces. And my thing about that is about um, putting up a warning sign is that they're so, oh, I know who I'm thinking of, who I thought this reminded me of. The movie Kids. Hmm. Um, a lot of white dude. I got in a lot of arguments on Facebook over this film, okay? Mm -hmm. And I had to pull this one out for some of the progressive uh like lefty white dudes who are on my page being like that movie was sexualizing children i was like i know you oh love God. harmony corinne movies i know you do harmony corinne gives you a not cute look at adolescent lives in america who are in the middle of poverty mm -hmm. you know all the same themes that cuties is dealing with but it's boys yeah. It's boys raping girls. It's, you know, like, it's visuals that maybe they can really... I don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. um, I I could not finish kids. Yeah, Couldn't I finish mean, just it. that description alone, I'm like, um... Yeah, it's about these um, kids that, like, they're homeless for the most part. Some of them, some aren't. But, like, um, came in a good time talking about the AIDS epidemic. Mm -hmm. Or pandemic, kind of, but in the U.S. So, yep. Yeah. Wow. I just pointed out that this movie came out years ago and people seem to really love it. Talking about some yeah. of the same scary things and um, just chill. Yeah. We live in a sexist society. Just think for a few seconds Be willing before to you post. Admit it, yeah. And look at, uh, looking more into the content that you're going to consume, I guess, before developing an opinion on it. Mm -hmm. And trying to go from there if you're going to watch it. Because I remember um, French Twitter, you know, when it got introduced to us cuties they were like hey i know it may seem a certain way but like you should probably watch you should probably you watch uh, opinions you know because obviously it came out in france first so yeah. i don't know i think i might have to have to watch it I, um, okay good it looks like too interested in it though i yeah it had such a bad rollout i can understand why you'd be like i don't need to expose myself to that mm -hmm. um okay i'm glad to see that there's like better representation here mm. too because i'm like yeah this was good cinema i think at the end of the day well, I will take this whole conversation into mm. account and see how I feel about it. That's interesting. But, moving on. It is Women's History Month, Taylor Swift. Swift. Um, so <laughs> As we're a gonna, matter of fact. Uh, so we are going to talk about a badass woman. Uh, today, I found out about Masako Katsura. 
and she is known as the first lady of billards which i also recently just found out is another name for pool so this is very fitting for me <laughs> um it she was basically a trailblazer for women in pool and she was in this is during the 1950s she basically became just a badass at it and Pool was not like a sport that a lot of women were in. It was very male dominated, and she came in the game and she started fucking shit up. And she's known as the first lady of billers. So learning about her, and she's Japanese, so that's cool. Um, just learning <laughs> about her, you know, because I feel like, especially in America, we just hear a lot about like white people and like white women who were first and shit. So Ooh, those posters, like Swag. look at her. She got so much drip. And like how the color look I I don't even know how she's holding the pool. <laughs> like this is an ancient science. Like low low key, those things are kind of heavy on the end. So good look at her. Very cool. I appreciate her. These photos are gorgeous. Yeah. When's her documentary coming out? Her bio. I would love thing. to know. I would love to know a lot more about her too. Like look at that. That's just dope. That looks like a fucking movie pit poster, it's really like a beautiful. promotional poster. So good for her. Good for Masako. Yeah, I wonder if there's any cool stats. But yeah, she's paving way. And that's so cool because I w did have an idea for an icon, and they are mm -hmm. also Japanese male. But, oh. but it's just interesting how we are sometimes on the same point. We are. A little degrees off, but close. Just a little bit, but it's enough. Close <laughs> enough. Um, this is so... I just love looking at the fashion of this time. Mm -hmm. What was she wearing? Yeah, first of all, all of her outfits that I've seen so far, she was serving, honey. Like, she was walking in there, playing pool with these, like, men. Like, I'm going to be looking cute while doing it and beating y'all asses. So I wonder I if this it. move was, like, she coined this. Her go this crazy move. angle. Ooh, sure. Oh, the can shooting star. I was going to be like, ooh, she, is, she named it the shooting star? No, I don't think so. <laughs> That's excellent. Mm -hmm. And when Diamond was time to tell me about this, I thought of the Black Widow. Someone I used to I used to actually watch Billards on ESPN for mm -hmm. some reason. Usually because probably the game was off. Um, but yeah, Jeanette Lee, also known as the Black Widow. And oh my God, she was diagnosed with terminal cancer. Oh no, uh, uh, did not know that. But she's still alive. Yeah, Thank yeah. God. Living in Brooklyn. Stay well, queen. She's but, American, but she's of Korean descent. Korean descent. I'm like, okay, great. So, who knows? She paved ways Masako, because of Masako. Friend, yeah, paving ways for Jeanette and killing things out here in pool. Also, I didn't know that pool was considered like a professional sport. I don't understand. How is polling not considered a sport, but pool is? Um, there's a lot of like angles. You gotta get like the projector the binder projector out or whatever and like it's a little math timing weight but but, but you're right but pole dancing pole. should still be an olympic sport i am not arguing against you on that what that's insane like you know what whatever where Just did pool before. originate anybody know <laughs> where did billards so i feel like that's england what a name like billards billards Oh, uh, it appears to be, I mean, with that equipment alone, like somebody had to build that table. <laughs> Looks like English folk. Mm. I feel like they would, only them could come up with a name like Billards. Billards. But you know, I would love, oh, oh French, right. hush my mouth. Yerp, I know it's somewhere in Yerp. 15th century. Um, I would also love to look up more, okay, for her name, I'm forgetting it. Masako? Masako about how she learned pool. Like, yeah, was it something she learned in it. Japan or like did she come to America? Because there were like, um, on the West Coast at least, there were a lot of um, Japanese culture clubs mm -hmm. where like, yeah, you'd, you'd be like playing billiards on one floor and dancing on the other floor. I wonder where she was based out of. Like, did she come here and start fucking it up in pool? Or Do we just she need to look? Dance? Oh, Google donate. Oh, I see. So today she was named a fish. Mm -hmm. Well, then that means the Wikipedia page has got to be somewhat accurate. Oh, after marrying a U.S. Army non-commissioned officer. Sounds about right. Immigrated to the U.S. Japan's only. Oh, she became Japan's only female professional player. Excellent. Good for her. 
she had 30 exhibition appearances in 1958. Oh, wow. Okay, she's been on TV. She lived a long life, too. Up in her 80s. Yeah. Strong. A little bit is known about her childhood in Japan. So, yeah. Imagine yeah. that was quite the story. Good for her. Excellent. I did not know that. So, thanks for that one, Google. Love that. <laughs> also, she still looks bomb in all her pictures. She's like, just looks so eloquent doing it. Like, oh, this? I'm just going to get all these balls in this hole real quick. No big deal. I don't know any technical billard terms, if you will. Yeah, it's crazy um, that that game came out in the 1500s, and it took until the 20th century for <laughs> someone, a female in Japan, to pick it up. That's interesting. Mm. Good for them. Yeah, excellent. Love to hear it. Good, for, good on you, Masako. I'm glad she's being honored. I haven't heard of her before today, to be honest. Like, if she was that bomb, we should have been acknowledging her earlier on. But whatever. So what are we going to do to celebrate Women's History Month? Like, do you have any practices, goals, things you want to implement in your, you know, just like we prepare for a new year? Oh, girl, I don't <laughs> what know. What are we going to do for Women's <laughs> History Month? This has never been a question I've ever been asked before, so I've never given much thought to it. Yeah. Do you have any idea? I need to call my grandma. Oh, okay. <laughs> let her, let her know that she's an OG. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, let her know she's loved. She's an originator. I was just thinking this morning, I was reminiscing about meeting uh, my boyfriend's grandma. <laughs> I remember acting so strange, but I saw this little black lady surrounded by, like, nine... Um, like young girls mm -hmm. and I could see she had like gold teeth and stuff and I'm like I just need to get closer to her real quick and I just like shuffled over mm -hmm. the wedding and just like stared at her and I'm like hello, hello. like you are the orient of this family and I asked her like how many grandchildren do you have she's like eh, I, it was upwards of like 20 oh, like, it was shit. actually shit. insane I'm like this is crazy um, I just feel like that memory, also that I had this morning, I think my own grandma, I'm like, yeah, you need to just shout out to your grandma when you can, because they did bring in a lot of new, you know, they brought you into this life. That's good. Give them oh, a shout out. That's very sweet. I've never given thought to this. <laughs> so maybe I should... I'll make another... Yeah, I'll just yeah. keep rattling off yeah. ideas. Another thing y'all can do for Women's History Month is when you see your friend, mm -hmm. who is a female, or male, this, this goes for everybody, but women, I guess, typically we like to say to each other... Oh my god, you look so good. I like, you know, we talk about their appearance is the first thing we maybe say about someone. Instead of asking, like, how are you? Mm -hmm. Or checking in, like, yeah, how was your thing today? Or are you still doing that thing? I don't know. Just be really cognizant of how many times we um, put our appearance and our friends' appearances up on a higher level. Sometimes it's for me looks like in comments, too. Mm -hmm. Like, when my friends post pictures of their artwork... I really try to be the person that comments like fire emoji, like go off, keep doing that. Yeah. And then when we see just like those, you know, when it's like a selfie or a picture talking about like their body or something, I will always, you know, give them my thumbs up. But for the most part, I kind of like let those go because obviously it's going to get a lot of comments and likes. I'm trying to be conscious about where I place my comments and likes on people's page because it's me as an overthinker and anxiety thinker. I know that people do pay attention to those numbers and comments and they're mm -hmm. like, oh, they only comment on pictures when I, okay. Oh. So let your friend know their art is dope. Yeah, I feel like I'm always doing that though. Like if it, it doesn't matter to me. I'm like, oh, you posted a bikini picture, fire. You posted a picture of you painting, super fire. Yeah. I'm just gonna be supportive of everything that you do. <laughs> but that's just me. But I, I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. A lot of our compliments are parents based and I feel like we should kind of move away from that. I think I've started to actually do that when I'm talking to people now. Like, how are you? What's what's life like for you? Is there anything on your mind? Is there anything you want to share? You know? And then if, if the topic just so happens to fall on their appearance, that's when I'm like, all right, then you want to talk about how good you look? Because you look good. <laughs> and they continue to go from there. So yeah, I think, ooh, what should I do for Women's History Month? I think of some more. Yeah, I'm gonna have to think about that. We could create a movie list of like all, or like movies too, TV shows, of like all female directed. Okay, female content, writers. Female that writers. Kind of, oh, I love 
love that idea. Actually. Or like strong female leads, because that's actually something I realize I don't know about. I said it the other day, and I was like, mm, actually, I need to fact check. But there aren't enough movies where there's like an anti-hero femme character, where it's just like, oh, we can see this person as like complicated. They make a lot of mistakes, and they're kind of like extreme in that way. Uh, I can't like really name a movie off the top of my head where I'm like, yeah. oh yeah, anti hero. I know they exist, especially in like the sci-fi realm. Yeah, that's sad though that we can't really think of immediately. <laughs> no, that's why we're doing the research. We're gonna do that. We should do that. We should put together like a list to share with our viewers. Oh. At least by the end of the month, oh, give them like a that? full completed list. That would be great. Or our top five recommendations. Let us know if you'd yes. like that. An anti-hero list. I love anti-hero. And okay. yes, Polite Hex, you're right. Mm -hmm. Everybody, we could, we could work on those greetings with everybody. <laughs> we can all do a little better. Oh, well, Polite Hex would love that. So that's what we shall do. Make that list. Is there anybody watching who would like a tarot reading on that note? That would be kind of a hard transition. Yes. I'm working on it, bro. No worries. No worries. While we think about while we think about what Diamond can do for Women's History Month, let me grab my tarot deck. Uh, <laughs> I I feel like for Women's History Month, I don't know. I, I just, again, I've never been asked this. I never really had the opportunity to think about that. What do I feel like women need to be honored? Be honored. Oh my God. I don't have a lot of older women in my life that I want to honor. That sounds terrible, but, like, truth be told, like, I guess, I don't know. Oh, my Aunt Shirley, I should spend more time with her. She's someone I, that's an older woman in my life I can honor. But, yeah. Can you get some wisdom? I don't have relationships with, like, my grandmothers or anything, so that's, no, I thought that was a really cute idea, but I was like, something I can't do. Um... That's fair. Oh, yeah, let's work on it. I'm gonna spend some time with Miss Aunt Shirley. See what she's up to. I do love spending time with her, though. I, I feel like we're very much alike in a lot of ways, and I see that every time I go like talk and visit with her, I'm like, is this a glimpse into my future, Aunt Shirley? Are you who I am when I reach the age that you are right now? That's excellent. Because if so, I am very much on board with this process. I don't think I have a choice in that matter, but I'm very much so on board. <laughs> Would you like a tarot reading to light next? Yeah, anyone in the chat, roll them up. If you'd like a reading, just all you have to do is write in your sun sign. If you know your big three, let us let us show throw them out there. So list your big three or your sun sign and a question you have for the universe as we shuffle here. And you know, besties ponder big two because they're the same as mine. Aries sun. Oh, that's Aries right. Sun. Double Aries, Gemini Rising. So fun. Ooh, so fitting for this this duo we have here as well. Oh my god, also, what's the update with the move? Are you still yeah. um, in the Midwest or have you left us? Become a New Yorker. Oh. <laughs> Upgraded. I shouldn't say left us. You know, I was talking to my friend. Uh, her mom is a therapist. <laughs> and they're saying that kids in Michigan have a really hard time <laughs> like letting go of their parents and like moving mm. on. Like, there's like some sort of shame. Not me. Les, <laughs> what's good? Okay, can you remind Hi. me though of your signs? I know Scorpio. Well, all right. Okay, I'm we're glad you got a moving, minute. But that's interesting that people from the Midwest, because I have zero attachment issues with my family. I'm like, bye, I'm out. I think it was interesting that she said that. I'm like, huh, I don't know if it's. I can see it in this, like, more of an environmental, like, small town maybe mentality. Oh, yeah. Just, like... Close-knit. Um, religion is definitely a factor, too. Just, like, the levels of shame. I feel like religion brings it out. Mm. Scrolling things. All right. Could we ask? All right. Reaching for our good friend, Polite Hex. Also, Blight Hex has a great podcast available mm -hmm. on Verge.fm. Would really like to partner with you guys. I wanted to submit an application to do a talk show segment slash just like link in our current program, but I don't think I'm going to get the application in. I think the deadline already passed. Oh. Yeah. On that note, I have 
have to go put some stuff in the dryer while you're doing okay. the tarot reading. But I will return. But I'm trying to be productive of the time here. That's so funny. <laughs> So your orienting card for this reading, Polite Hex, is the Justice card. Yeah, okay. Record one of these a month and submit it. Yeah, we record them all. They're all on our YouTube. But yeah, would love to do that in some fashion. Whatever works. Do, do, do. What are you guys listening to? Right now I'm playing just this album called, from Gudang. I think they're Spanish. The album's called Nostalgia. I can't pronounce it. But G-U-D-A-N-G is the name of the group. They're tight. But we definitely need music recommendations for this stream. Ideally somewhere that's kind of indie so we don't get flagged for copyright on YouTube. Same name on the tube? I know we're sometimes our house on YouTube. If you go to our um, channel page for Twitch, there's a link. Okay. So, your orienting card is justice. I'd love to see it. Time has come. In your past, Polite Hex, we have the Page of Swords. Very air-like. Appropriate. Appropriate. Oh, scroll back to your signs again. Double Aries, Gemini rising. Okay. Page of swords in your past. Present is the empress. Future, the devil. Oh, boy. <laughs> so, in your past, page of swords. This is about, you know, not having all the answers, not necessarily having all the experience, but a wise person nonetheless. The page of swords speaks, they're sharp. They're witty. They use their intellect to get around. Um, this is just who you are. Pages also typically represent more of like a femme person. So um, if you don't identify that, it could be someone else. But I'm going to guess that this is you spreading, using your voice and your intellect to get you places. Okay, excellent. So the present. We have another... Someone with high feminine energy. Okay. The Empress. Sitting here. What I love about the Empress, I actually did a reading for a friend uh, this week, and they got the Empress card. So perhaps what you're focusing on right now is instead of always being the one that's vocal and like seeing what's on your mind, getting things done, maybe making the first move in things, um, the Empress just kind of sits and lets the things come to her. She's very attractive, she's magnetic, if you will, and things come her way. She lives a balanced life. There are so many elements in this card all kind of working harmoniously together. She's got her bag. She's got what she needs. She doesn't need to be running all over the place to, you know, be recognized. Justice is due. She knows this. She puts out good things. Good things come back to her. So Empress is a great card and also has a lot to do with both manifestation as well. Just like seeing yourself as having all the things already, all the elements, just needing to direct the energy somewhere positive. Excellent. Excellent. Ooh, we should get some more music going. Okay. Here we go. For your future, we have the devil card. Interesting. So while it seems like all is going your way due to your own manifestation and your working and how you're able to like name your needs and get things done, the devil is always lingering. <laughs> the devil is always lingering. This really, I think, upright can be a positive thing because it kind of shows that you are, I don't know, I don't want to phrase this. One way I want to think of it is just like a warning sign of just like, be careful to not fall into old habits, old vices. And, you know, as you're in this journey and people are coming to you, you're very magnetic. You seem to have all like the, you know, shiny, shiny. People are always going to be attracted to that who just want to take 
and just want to be able to use that your shininess for their own uh, benefit. So just be just be aware of that. Because while it is justice, it's your time to have all these things. Sometimes if you're a giving person and you, you, know, you think you know someone and you're good at reading people, um, you can be eager to give some of that shininess away. So welcome back. <laughs> so looks like things are going well for you. I, the cards have nothing else to say other than keep doing it, girl. Justice is, it's just time. Mm. So whatever you need to name, <laughs> it's, it's coming your way. Did I miss some juicy details? Honestly, Plant Hex, as we know, is this being the bad bitch that they've always are. I just said that maybe they don't have to speak and demand as much as maybe they're used to having to do to get attention because it's just kind of coming towards them. Ooh, we about it. The future is that people just get, ooh. They see the shininess and they just want to take it for themselves. <laughs> so be careful of that. Also, she definitely is giving Beyonce. I love the card. Like, this reminds me of um, Beyonce's like uh, performance as like Ocean. Yes. Oh shit. When she was like, look at that. So that was beautiful. Very much Women's mm -hmm. History Month card. Very on brand. I've been saying if you will a lot, and I blame my best friend for that. So. Oh. Uh, David, you crazy David, son of a gun. David, whose music we were listening to earlier. He provided the tunes for our stream today, so go check him out. His name is Solo the Producer. Always ready to. Uh, Support us as well. We love to see it. Also wearing um, the chill clothes from a friend. Ooh, who's also a creator in Detroit. His name is Detroit Fred and fantastic photographer. He just started his clothing endeavors and I was an early supporter. So, ooh. Clothes? Yes. Okay. Chill clothes. The, uh, you know, chill right here. Clothes on this side. Snowman indicating that. That's what the blue eyeshadow was inspired by today. Okay. So we, uh, we love that. Let's look up Chill Clothes on Instagram? Yes, yes, yes. Freak yeah. Just launched the site. So we love to see it. Support black businesses all the time. Not just February. We can't just do February, guys. Yeah. It's not going to work out. <laughs> no. Melanin March is what we're calling it, too. Like, they're like, you thought Black History Month was the end? Melanin March. Mm -hmm. Oops. I'm, ooh, Although okay. I don't have much melanin. So. You can't. It didn't come out right. <laughs> you didn't have any melanin this March? I don't have any melanin in any March. Or any month for that matter. Do y'all see how pale go. I am? This was never a secret. That's funny. Ooh. Funny, I feel like we, when we read for them, we saw a similar ooh, ooh, ooh. Mm -hmm. moment. Ooh. The bag is coming. The bag is coming. Okay. Leyes are Scorpio with some Gemini tendencies. And Aries. So fun. So your general card energy for the reading is the Five of Cups. TTYL, Play Hex. Hey, put a little uh, germ in the ear of uh, the Verge FM folks. <laughs> we would love to be there. Yeah, we want to collaborate any way we can. You're welcome for the reading. Okay, Liz, your general energy, five of cups. This is about um, sometimes not being able to see what positive things are there. Hey, thank you. Um, sometimes we get so focused on like what we can't do or what didn't go right and then we don't focus on the things that we're, you know, capable of doing and the good things in our life. So this is a cup, most rela relates to relationships too. So if you're feeling like isolated or the people are drifting away from you, there's still some people in your corner that you're maybe just not uh, utilizing. Past, the devil. Satan knows. Satan always knows what we, <laughs> what we like, our, our, our vices, our things. This is also has a lot to do with just like pleasure too. It's not always a bad card. Like what's great or what separates Satan from Jesus Christ or God is that he's not about like sinning in the sense of like you don't have to feel guilty for living a pleasurable life for living a hedonistic life um find joy in that he's all for it <laughs> yes this is also a very Scorpio card 
Um, Scorpios are always like that dark magic man, or just like I do what I want. So that's we it. Love, we love Satan's your homie. It's we can't not enjoy parts of Satan. <laughs> He's kind of iconic. I like the word. I like his Lucifer. Satan Lucifer. Sounds, Satan sounds so. That's his Satan. like court name. <laughs> Satan. Lucifer's government. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's my government name. Um. For your present, we got Six of Cups. So currently, you are either seeking some mentorship or you've recently found someone who sees you as a mentor. And that's been like um, perhaps some new emotional excitement in your life or soothing. Um, if you're not doing this now, this is just advice to maybe check it out. Maybe you need a mentor. Or there's someone in your life that sees you as a mentor that um, you can definitely tap into. So this could also be speaking on, maybe you already have this dynamic with somebody and you don't see them as a close friend, that this is a friendship that could be tapped into and explored more. Mm. So I'm not sure what the direction is. If it's someone that you really admire or vice versa. Mm -hmm. It's a fun little dynamic. Mm -hmm. I like how it's like a small child and the older woman. Some folks read this card as like your childlike self and like getting in touch with your like the nostalgia of things six of cups is very nostalgic mm. so yeah thank you for bringing that up like a third oh, layer yeah. or a third way to read this is just um having a sit down conversation with younger you and trying to parse through like memories and just good times mm. nostalgia very much so if you are looking for career advice this could also just be um a reminder to go with something that you used to enjoy doing as a child. Or look to the winds, Rabbi. Look to your past and what you liked. Future Ace of Pentacles. The bag. So you may find yourself um, after some mentorship and reflecting on what, you know, what good things are in your life. Relationships that are in your life pre-existing. It could lead to a job. Or a uh, collaborator on a new project. A new venture typically has some coins but this is definitely looking your future like there's going to be some sort of maybe startup or entrepreneurial activities going on there Love that. it connects to your relationships though so somebody's either that go-getter personality that maybe you can like help mentor if there's somebody that's like always jumping the gun on things and you're like mm, man i like what you're doing but like what if you just tweak your style a little bit mm. that this could maybe be a collaboration in the making they need your input and your insight it's networking really it's not about what you know but who you know i can't tell you every job i've gotten that i've been remotely okay with has mm -hmm. been a reference honestly that's how i got this new job references shout out to you mama love her not my actual mom the person that got me the job i call her mama <laughs> <laughs> that's so sweet Yay, thanks for playing along, Liz. I like having you on the stream because you're always down to do readings. We need that. Who's yes. going to be able to put their dirt out there? I have been putting their dirt out there. It's just yeah. sometimes people get uncomfortable when it's like, <gasps> Oh, you're going to tell me about myself. Me? Self-reflection. I feel like I always tell myself, you guys see me be a dumbass on the stream every week. I mean, It's hey, only fair. I feel like if we can't show who we really are, then you don't deserve us at our fake professional. If you can't handle me at my worst. Honestly, you don't deserve me at all. Uh, Not even at my best. <laughs> Anyways, well, I think this was a great stream. I feel better getting that off my chest, you know. Got a little laundry know. in the middle. Yeah. Like, that was productive. Listen, we gotta make most of our time here. I yeah. only got so much time on this planet. I'm gonna be, you know, <laughs> making the most of it at all times. Yes. And this is real life. It wouldn't be simply extra if I didn't do something extra in the middle of the damn show. So, very on brand. On brand. Very on brand. Leah says we are fun. Thanks. Needed it. Also, love the coordination between us. Like, we never try. It oh, just no. happens. It's just that connection. This Aries <sighs> Gemini connection is just unstoppable. Honestly, I'm, I'm very for it. Always for it. But I wouldn't have it any other way because my co-host is supposed to be a dynamic like that. True. He's very boring to watch and deal with. But on that note, thank you so much for tuning in. To this lovely episode is this like our fifth official episode 
or Ooh, our, maybe our fourth a fish Come around that area yeah um we appreciate all those who have tuned in those who have been watching the youtube we appreciate you so if there's any yes. content that you guys want us to talk about want to learn more about or just any movies that you want to see us give our opinions on because i feel like that's become an integral part of the show now yes. like the movie reviews and show reviews let us know drop a comment also let us know like let your friends and stuff know about us like we need this we need more people to tune in <laughs> we need to give you guys more content to share too and that's why we're, next week we're going to take a break off the stream and just yes. do some photos some content planning and mm -hmm. actually get some engagement Yes. If you want to recommend anything to talk about, though, go to our channel page. There is a little suggestion box that we've installed there. So Ooh. drop a little message. It's getting fancy up in here. Every every time. Every single time. We're about to get real simply extra. Mm -hmm. And we will take that hiatus next week, but we will be back the week after that with another episode of Simply Extra. Thank you so much for tuning in, everyone. We love you. Stay Bye. beautiful. Stay safe. Bye. <laughs>